Anna, good morning. It's not supposed to be gloomy and rainy with scattered showers all over in the area. <laughs> There was exactly a 0% chance of that when I went to bed a few hours ago. This morning right away we get to reunite with an old friend. Thunder. She's a bit of a haul when she's full for the half ton, but we got it here. Got the fuel going in. I want to turn the key on, cycle the key, and see how much def or ad blue it went through before I needed diesel, so we'll hop up in there quick. Cheep, cheep. Ah, just kidding. Pretty dang close, actually. That's a lot closer than I expected with the uh, low RPMs we were running. Now that's pretty doggone handy. I got both of them running in there at the same time. Yep. No, I'm headed back right now, so if Jim wants to come take over for you, then we can grab that seed tender and toss some seed in quick, finish this last 20 acres up. Morning, Jim. Today, as long as the rain stays away, we plan on planting all of our F2F uh, non-GMO seed from Farmers Business Network. We got 40 units here of a 92 day that did really well for us last year. And we've got five bags of two other varieties here that we will test alongside of it and then we'll do a yield check on those when we come back in the fall see how they all compared with each other i've had a lot of questions on why the seed is different colors why the corn isn't always yellow why is it green or purple or pink it's actually just the coating that they put on the seed to help protect it in colder soils or wet soils there's also an insecticide on there a lot of times just to protect the seed until that plant is out of the ground when you see two different color seeds in there, what that is typically is a 5% refuge, they call it. So 5% is not resistant to corn borer, while the other 95% is. That is legal by law. They have to blend in that 5% so that the corn borer don't build up immunity to that resistance with, built within the plant. So it's just a different coating, different brands of coating, different styles of coating, different uh, genetically modified traits. The stuff in the front here that we just put in, the pink stuff coming out of the F2F box, that is all non-GMO. <laughs> we need just a little bit of seed here to finish off this field before we switch varieties. There we go. So this field here, we've only got about 18 to 20 acres left in the corner here. This is all Roundup ready seed or genetically modified seed, but the, the field we're going to next is going to be all non GMO. So we put in just enough seed to get by here and get these acres done. And I'll go ahead and back into this corner, square it off real nice because I'm not a barbarian like my buddy Randy. If you listen to the Off the Husk podcast, a few of you will get that. We're doing it nine miles an hour. 99.5% singulation, all good things. There's a little bit more of our unexpected rain showers. We'll be fine for now, but when it really becomes a problem is if we get any soil starting to pick up on the wheels back here because then we can't maintain a good consistent planting depth. And that would be not all good things. But hey, sometimes when it rains, all good things must come to an end. Is that, maybe that's how that goes? The rain held off just enough. Finish that up, on to the next. Nine mile an hour end rows. We do have some more bigger rocks in this field, so I'm gonna have to keep my eyes open for, for stuff. Things happen quickly at nine miles an hour when you're used to going four to six for your whole life. See, there's a couple of cute ones that have come off this area. If we heat, ah, as I was saying, if we hit one of those rocks at this speed, we'd probably cut it in half and then we'd have two big rocks to deal with. These sprinkles just don't want to quit. Time to do some digging, give this a check and make sure everything's going in and acting the way it's supposed to. Gotta do that in between rain showers, you know? You can see the ground is damp, but it's not sticking to my boots. So that's a good thing. We're uh, right around two inches. 
which is the same as being right around perfect. The closing wheels all look good. I always like to look at the T-handles, make sure they're set the same. I do the same with the depth right here. Take a look down here and feel the seat trench. Make sure there's not a lot of compaction. Another way to test that is to give it a couple of these. See if you can really feel the sidewall compaction there at all. It's doing pretty good. We got just beautiful soil conditions right now. I'm gonna talk a lot more about the planter itself a little bit later on, but basically this planter does not use the traditional seed tube like a lot of planters do. It's actually got a belt that runs around in there and the seeds are placed into that belt. That belt runs at the exact same speed as the planter and follows the seed, brings the seed all the way down right into the seed trench. And that's how we're able to drive so fast and get that good singulation because there's no free fall of that seed coming through a tube like with a traditional style corn planter. These whole units can come apart by hand basically without using any tools. I'm gonna get to learn and know the planter a little bit better before I show you guys that and how this all works and I'll show you that brush and everything but it's a really cool concept uh, some pretty innovative stuff really cool and then then there's this this is cool too I've been thinking about giving this thing a name I think I'm gonna throw a post up on my Instagram but uh, let me know if you guys got a really good name for this I, I kind of think the Millennial Falcon is a cool name let me know what you think I've got, got? I've got probably uh, two rounds, two or three rounds worth of seed left, and then I'll need seed. We were just about ready to fill here, but I've got an issue with a vacuum sensor. The right side vacuum, there's one on each side of the planter, the right side one is kind of tweaking out on me. It's not real happy, so it's running way too low. It says it's running too low vacuum pressure, which means that the vacuum essentially is running really, really fast to try to make up for that low sensor reading. We called Midwest Machinery and uh, talked to them. Everything's hooked up back there. I pulled the row unit apart and took a look at it, so it's all good back there. Now we're kind of waiting on them to see they should have a sensor in stock and it shouldn't be difficult to install that because hopefully that's the issue. It, it's a little tiny piece with two screws and a couple connections, pretty simple to fix. I could restart it and we could try it again or we could just load it for now and wait. Oh, I suppose, yeah, you can see it right on the computer so you, you know exactly where we're at. Yeah, all right, send Tim over and uh, I'll have that row unit apart then. Okay, thanks. The dealer's only nine miles straight up the highway right now and this is warranty work anyway. So I'll just pop the row unit off here. Can show you now, I got the hose off, that's easy. This clamp comes off. Then this whole row unit lifts out and this whole plastic cover comes right off. Now you can get right into everything. We have troubles sitting still this time of year. So after I shut the tractor off, I'm gonna restart it here, see if I can get it to work. If I can't get it to work, I'm still gonna try and make a round or two to run this seed completely out. That way we can load while we wait for the, the uh, Midwest machinery guy to get here. We'll see what the population does. I'm thinking it's gonna plant a lot of doubles, but I'm gonna try it. I can hear it spooling up now and that vacuum is low, so I know it's about to throw a coat at me. Yeah, it threw the coat at me and I can hear it screaming, so it's not right. But, I'm gonna mess with it a little bit here. Actually, the population looks decent, singulation is decent, and the vacuum settled down. It's almost like I fixed it, even though I didn't. Let's try throwing a little speed at her and see if it holds. There's my nine. Stuff does funny things sometimes, but we should maybe replace that sensor anyway. Weird. There we go. It did it again when I turned on the end. As soon as I set the planter down and it started feeding seeds, it settled down and now it's happy again. So it's when I picked the planter up on the ends. Interesting. As soon as I get into the field and it starts feeding its seed, it, it levels out and it works just fine. But when I pick up on the ends and turn, it, it's like it, it, it goes crazy again and starts singing the fan up. Perfect timing. Out of seed and Midwest is here for a sensor. All right, 
it. We got our F2F non-GMO seed going in here. I got this program to put in a thousand pounds. We're gonna put 500 in this side so we run out first and have the spot to compare. It'll all work out nicely. We got a new sensor in. We made a half around here and uh, it's doing it again. It planted to this end just fine, but he's gonna check some other stuff over here. Well, we got it fixed. Don't ask. Actually, I'll just show you here. So the uh, vacuum pressure goes through the main frame tube. This is actually carrying vacuum pressure to go to these hoses. And the hose on the row that was having an issue was off about like that, just enough to screw things up, but not enough to be obvious. So we got the old sensor back in because there's nothing wrong with the sensor. It was a hose the whole time. Farmer error. Back in business. One of those things. You guys see that one row that's plowing a trench there? I've tried everything I can. I've got one row cleaner that will not work. It's stuck down in the dirt, plowing a trench. I don't know what is going on. It moves freely. I've taken all the lines off. There's pressure there. The tank is running. The other 15 of them are good, but I've wasted enough time with it. I'm going back to get an impact and I am pulling that thing off. The house is right there. So it's, it's, I'm just sick of wasting time with it. I'm yanking it off. I have grown super duper impatient because we have wasted so much time today. Hey, you got plenty of extra time. Uh, don't rush because now I got to run back to the yard and yank a row cleaner off. I can't, it will not get up out of the dirt. So we're having problems with those things again. Yeah, no, I'm just sick of dealing with it. So I'm getting it out of there. And of course it is raining. Well, could be a lot worse. I'm not even gonna ask him. Oh, I can't even do that. Son of a gun. Yeah. You're naughty. I don't see anything bent on there, but I don't care. I'm planting. Look at that trench it was digging compared to the other rows. I don't know, man. I don't know. That's better. Before we ever ran row cleaners, the internet used to ask me, why don't you run row cleaners? And my answer was always because my dad ran them 20 years ago and I always said he had nothing but problems with them so he didn't feel like they were worth it. 20, 25 years later, I'm starting to agree with them. Now, if you're running a no-till situation or you're planting green into cover crop or you got a different situation other than fluffy, mellow, conventional till, I can see where they could make a huge, huge difference. But for our conditions, for what we're doing, I just don't think they're necessary. My one side of the planter is out of the 92-day hybrid, 92-day maturity hybrid. I gotta throw some bags into one side. We're running a consistent hybrid now on the right side of the planter. On the left side, I've got two other hybrids here. I'm gonna put them on the left side of the planter. And then when we come by to harvest, we'll be able to compare one side to the other because we know that this hybrid did well for us last year. So we wanna compare a couple other ones, a couple new ones to see how they compare to the one that we know. Well, I'll toss, I'll toss the other five bags on the side here then. You can take my pickup down there. Okay. All right, well, I'll just leave it right here then. Let me know if you, all right, sounds good. Sounds like Jim's having issues with the digger or the field cultivator south of here a little ways. So dad was maybe gonna need my pickup to go down and help him, but apparently he's got an issue with it. Not an issue with a mechanical breakdown, but something else but he found a knife in there it sounds like we're gonna be all right some days are just like this a lot of days actually don't get me wrong here I'm, I'm not complaining at all I fully understand the fact that I'm sitting in a brand new tractor pulling a brand new planter and that's because you guys tune in and watch me and I appreciate that so much and it's because John Deere 
reached out to me and, and wanted me to have this opportunity to run this equipment and showcase it to you guys and I hope you enjoy it. Uh, I certainly am of course but I'm not complaining and uh, and just understand that this isn't this isn't exactly the situation for everyone, right? There's there's a lot of farmers out there that are not sitting in brand new tractors pulling brand new planters. This just isn't uh, this isn't how it goes for everybody. So I'm not complaining. I hope everybody out there is having a terrific and safe spring planting season so far. I also just got off the phone with uh, the planter guy, the planter professional at John Deere, and and I talked to him about that row cleaner. And he mentioned, first thing he asked is, was it near the pivot points? Well, it is. And he mentioned rephasing the cylinders on the planter, if maybe they needed to be rephased, which means run them fully up, fully down a couple times, cycle them through to make sure they're phased correctly. That could be a possibility. Uh, obviously, I had it all the way down. I was trying to plant, but maybe, maybe I didn't phase it up. I don't know if that would be it or not, but... Uh, but that's something to check if it was still on there. But it's gone now, so we'll check that later. Nonetheless, sometimes when I'm frustrated, I just eliminate the problem and we'll worry about it later. I wanted to keep this tractor moving. I wish I had thought of that. I don't know if it would have fixed it or not, but we'll find out later. Any other farmers out there just get bored and eat eat prepackaged stuff the whole the whole day. Just you just can't stop. It's it's sad. FBN Todd! This looks alright. You should have seen me a little bit ago. I threw five bags. Now I'm all tuckered out. I'm sorry, I missed it. <laughs> Finished up my field here. This was uh, 125 acres. So far it's been an inefficient day, but we'll get there. Alright, we're in transport mode now. We're going to start easy fold. Pull the hydraulic back and this thing's going to do everything on its own while I hold this hydraulic button. It's almost too easy. Boy, that guy is really taking a nap. We're done with that field, so now we gotta drain the non-GMO corn out and put in the other variety. Planter's unloaded, time to reload. Just got a, an important phone call here. And it was from my wife. She chased me down to bring me chicken wings. No, that side? No, this side. Oh, oh, oh. Thanks, Mrs. M. Bye now. Bye bye now. Toodles. Got an issue here on row 14. I had a rock stuck in these uh, closing wheels that I didn't catch in time. It built up dirt in front of it, built it up behind the openers, and eventually the brush that delivers the seed started grabbing. And I believe it's wrapped some stuff around in that brush. It sent me a thing on a monitor saying that the brush uh, was limited. I needed to stop and check the brush. So you guys will get to see how these come apart now. Okay, now I just need to remember how this goes exactly. Here we go. Up and out. Pull the sensor off. And then, to get into the brush, pull these clips off. There we go. So that is not bad. This is, I, I forget what they call it, the seed, seed delivery brush. The seeds go in here, this brush spins around at the same speed as the planter and it takes the seed all the way down to the seed trench. You can see where that dirt's gotten in there and probably affected the speed of the belt. It does have a purge up on the computer so I can spin this belt to purge it and clean it out. But I wanted to pull it off anyway since it's easy enough to pull off and make sure I wasn't going to purge anything through there that might damage something else. This belt comes out fairly fairly easily but I wasn't the one who did it it's just got a spring here I'm learning along with you guys right now 
Ah. Okay, one more cover. There we go. Okay, I don't need to take the belt out. So I'm not going to. Because I can't... Uh... Now i got to figure out where that goes. Back to planting corn. Rain's coming. Five acres later, row 14 is acting up again. So I'm thinking, what is going on? What's the deal with row 14? So I jump out, check it out, and I picked up a piece of steel. This is, this is not what caused the issue before, but for the other farmers out there, how often do you pick something little up like this that's been laying out there for a hundred years and it just hits those openers just right and stops them? It's crazy. It happens once a year for me, it seems, which is a lot. Too many clouds now again for a nice sunset, but sun's going down I'll finally get to see how the lights on this thing really work at night nighttime farming sure is peaceful as long as things go well things are going good phones not ringing nobody's bothering you it's a peaceful time and it's a good time to turn on podcasts drop your favorite podcast down below because I want to know because I listen to a lot of them I'm assuming most of you will say either off the husk or field work it's natural you can admit it I don't like the looks of that maybe I'll get lucky DUN done time to shut this down for the night bring it on home off off well before I take off down the road I better find a local restroom here somewhere oh tractor comes with one wrong button there are no lights on in this shed it's just the tractor lights my gosh it's like a rolling city before I shut things down here for the night I got to say two things at the end of this video here number one Andy Detweiler harmless farmer on YouTube go check him out this guy farms with no arms I have rough days with two arms. This guy, uh, this guy does it with none. Uh, he's going through a rough time right now. Andy, I've never met you, buddy, but y you got a lot of people thinking about you right now. I know we certainly are, and um, if you handle this situation the way it appears is you handle everything else in life, you're gonna be just fine. Um, so you got a lot of people thinking about you. Um, check out Harmless Farmer on YouTube. Second thing on a on a whole separate note here, I mentioned two videos ago that if you guys could help me get to 500,000 subscribers by May 5th, I would write a check for $5,000 to the Farm Rescue Organization, which helps farm families during crisis, times of crisis sizes, get through those times. Uh, I said I would write the check for five grand. John Deere contacted me today. The company of John Deere, John himself called me and he said, if your viewers can get you to 500,000 by May 5th, they will also write a check for $5,000 to the Farm Rescue Organization. That's $10,000 that could be donated to the Farm Rescue Organization if you guys can help me reach that goal. If I don't reach that goal, I just, I won't be able to donate anything. So please help me reach a half million subscribers by May 5th, guys. And again, of course, thank you to you guys, the viewers. You are the reason that this planter and this tractor is here. You're the reason the seed tender is here, the Thunder Creek fuel trailer, the Mendeco vertical tillage tool. I can't thank you enough. So thank you for watching. Millennial Farmer, out.